What's going on, guys? Aaron here from Project Capital. We got Rich. Rich on the show. What's going on, Rich? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Just uh, excited to see some green out there today. Not that it's. I know. Not that it's, it's been a battlefield. Yes, we are at war. I've been telling everybody that we are at war, and legalization has definitely started with a lot of bloodshed. Yep. However, I believe that when they cry, I buy. So this is a great <laughs> buying opportunity. And I always say, everyone, buy in the red, sell in the green, take the emotion yeah. out of it. Everyone was asking me, why did you sell Aurora at 13? And, you know, look at the price now. There's your answer. Buy in the green, buy, buy in the red, sell in the <laughs> green. And, you know, don't be buying in the green and selling in the red. Because if that's what you're doing, then yeah. you got to really look at your trading strategies. Yeah, exactly. So obviously the first question I want to ask you, it's about the volatility in the market. Everybody's dying to hear different opinions. So let's hear your take. Recent volatility in the market, the sell-off with Aurora and Namaste specifically. Well, I think Aurora Cannabis, we have to keep in mind that they were at $5 in August. Yep. And the reason why I sold at 13 is I look at the chart and I think <clears> to myself, <throat> they were just at $5 two months ago. Mm-hmm. The shorters know that. The insiders know that. The shorters know that. The institutions know that. The investors know that. Everybody that's in the stock knows that. So unless you're chasing this stock and buying it at a 52-week high, which it was approaching at that point, I just thought, you know what? I, I, I wanted to play it safe. And I thought taking my money in the green was the smart strategy. It went up. To 15, I could have sold higher. Obviously, I could have made some more money, but you know, I'm happy with my returns and now it's down. So if I choose to buy in again, I can. Yeah. But I'm not gonna buy in again at 10 when I was buying it at five. Yeah. So I remember what I was buying it at. So for me, you know, I believe it could go lower. I mean, I know people don't want to hear that. Rich, it's your number one pick. And oh, but guys, you have to understand yeah. what goes up must come down, and what goes down must come up. And yep. I'm a realist and I look at the charts and stocks will typically trade around the middle of their 52 week high and 52 week low. They're very mm. rarely staying at a 52 week low or rarely staying at a 52 week high unless they're struggling or they're doing very, very, very well. So yep. if they are kind of just growing naturally, they should be trading somewhere in the middle of their chart. And if they're not trading in the middle of their chart, if they're trading at a 52-week low, like a lot of stocks have been trading recently, that's yep. the time to buy. Mm -hmm. And if they go up and they're heavily in the green and they're at 52-week highs, like Tilray was, like yep. Canopy was, like Aurora was, and I told you guys, I sold all my big holdings. I sold them all. No, that so, makes sense. You know, and I've been accumulating the smaller LPs because I'm waiting for the next run. I'm okay to wait two, three years. I'm just going to keep accumulating. Exactly. So, I mean, some cool picks, I think. What do you think about Merican and the other one was XLY or Oxley? I think Merican is a good company. I bought and sold it already. I'm not really in Merican right now. I love Oxley. I think it's dirt cheap. And I think it's one of those companies that will give us a 10x opportunity. So for me, that's what I'm looking for. And I have, you know, I'm accumulating tens of thousands of these smaller LPs. And I'm going to continue to do that. Yeah. So if they keep getting beaten up, that's okay. We will continue mm -hmm. to accumulate. My strategy is to accumulate the assets when they're underappreciated, undervalued, and underexposed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, obviously that's a great strategy. One more stock I want to get your opinion on, Afria. I think Afria is another one. You know, I put it in the same category. They were at under $10 two months ago. You know, yep. they went to 20. I'm not going to buy it at these prices. You know, when people are saying to me, you know, will you buy Afria at 16? Mm -hmm. Why? When I can buy Oxley under a dollar. Mm -hmm. Why? When I can buy FSD Pharma under a dollar. I, I don't oh, yeah, need, that's, I don't, that's I don't, another thing. FSD ran like crazy, almost 25% over the last two days. What do you think about their Israeli acquisition? I think it's huge. I think uh, them acquiring a company on the NASDAQ is enormous. 
Yeah. And them putting out an application to go onto the NASDAQ is an incredible sign of where they're going to go. So I yeah. believe as an investor, it is a diamond. I mean, it's been a diamond since day one. I brought that I brought that pick to my community first. I brought it to everybody first. I brought it to the, everybody before they even did their IPO. And it's been a huge success since day one. So I anticipate it will continue to be a success. That's another good one. Also, which one more that comes to mind is um, Alifia Health. Alifia yes. Health, aren't well, they? Aren't they planning to? Uh, aren't they planning to uplist? Yes, they are planning to uplist as well. And I love that company. I was another company that I talked about pre-IPO, and I mm -hmm. think that they have huge potential. They are a monster, and I think even at these levels, they're dirt cheap. And they went down to a dollar yeah. forty area. Which yeah. would have been a perfect time to pick them up. And I was looking at it and I just didn't pull the trigger. And I kicked myself and they're right back up over $2 again. So last time I looked like around two thirty something. So yeah, I love them. And I think they have so much potential. So That's much great. Potential. No. Totally, totally. So the first day of trading, Aurora dropped 12% on the New York Stock Exchange. What do you think of that? Why do you think that happened? If you have an opinion on that. Everything was dropping. So I think that they're just, they're one of the biggest players in the industry. If the whole industry goes down 10%, they're going to go down 10%. That's just, it's just the way it goes. Yeah. And unfortunately, what messed everything up this time around, as opposed to last year at this time, was Tilray and Canopy Growth ran too soon, too quickly. Yep. And in my opinion, they have been way overvalued. Oh, yeah. And they are kind of two of the biggest leaders in the industry. So now when they tumble down, which they're going to because they're overvalued, they're, those, bring, prices, those, those prices those prices are not justified. They're not justified. You can't justify yeah. those prices. So yeah. you're, this is why I've said I'm staying away from the bigger ones because I remember Canopy Growth when they were five bucks. Mm -hmm. I have friends of mine that have invested in them when they're at a dollar. So I'm investing in Oxley, I'm investing in Vivo, I'm investing investing in HIP, I'm investing yeah. in Harvest One, I'm investing in Radiant Technologies, I'm investing in the companies I know are going to explode, and they're cheap. They're cheap. So yes. why am I going to pay 40 bucks? No, that's true. One stock I mentioned, <laughs> it's, it's okay. might have been a collab with us, Micron Technologies. Have you done any research on Micron Technologies? I know that Aurora owns a part of it. And they're like a waste management company that's going to be dealing with waste from the cannabis industry. I think they're at 50 or 60 cents now. Yeah, I, I've looked into them a little bit. It's not one on my, like, it's on my watch list, but it's not one that I own. It's not one that I'm cur currently really looking at. Um, yeah. For me, I'm looking at the companies that I think have huge scalability. Vivo. Mm -hmm. Vivo's dirt cheap. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oxley. Mm -hmm. Dirt cheap. FSD Pharma. Dirt yep. cheap. And remember, FSD Pharma is working with Oxley. So that is true. Yeah. Yep. There I'm is, just so focused uh, on these right now. You have no idea. I'm going to just keep accumulating because I see like, I like everyone's talking about Aurora. Like they don't know. Like I was in Aurora at a dollar. Like I bought my daughter's RESPs in Aurora, which I'm holding long term at a dollar fifty. So I've already seen Aurora go up. So people that are chasing Aurora now, it's like, I've already seen that. Like, I'm looking for the next Aurora, man. Honestly, that's what I'm doing. Like, that's that's my plan. And that's what our community is doing. I know that we are looking, like, we're, we're loading up. We're loading up. Like, companies like Fire, Turchi. Like, Fire's a beast. Such a Yeah, beast. they were... A lot of those smaller cap so, ones sold off really hard. This this recent sell off, like great. really hard. Great. So if you're a new but investor yeah. and you're getting into this industry, guess what? You're getting in cheap. You're getting in cheap. There's, so there's so many deals. The last two stocks that come to mind before I'm going to ask this really interesting question is uh, Canopy Rivers and Australis Capital. I mean, we haven't seen that great performance recently, and I'm just wondering your. Uh, well, I own I own Astralis. So I'm going to continue to buy it. It's uh, yep. it's Aurora 2.0. So for yep. me, it's a no brainer. And Canopy Rivers is Canopy 2.0. So that's a no brainer too. So 
to me, that is buying Canopy at 40. So if you ask me, would you rather buy Canopy or Canopy Rivers? I would rather buy Canopy Rivers. Okay. Any day of the week. And you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Any day of the week. Why? Because it hasn't run yet. No, that's true. Aurora or down. Australia's Capital, which one would you buy? Aurora or Australia's Capital? Australia's Capital. Same deal, same deal. All right. So it's cheaper and it's the same company. They have the no, blueprints. They have the blueprints. So I don't see how they're not going to succeed. This is just an opportunity for us to buy an Aurora again. It's yep. it's Aurora 2.0. It's the same company. It's the same people. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's that is true. So I have a very exciting question. I heard that you were talking mystery and you left. So let's hear about it. So Andrew left, if you're watching, um, I appreciate you reaching out and I want you to realize that I respect you and as I, do we, yeah. And we know who you are and you're a very powerful guy. So mm -hmm. everything that we did was very tongue in cheek and everything that we did was just for entertainment purposes. Now, Thanks. Andrew left has contacted me and said for shits and giggles, he thinks that we should live publicly compare our trading statements or trading results. Now, I am not going to challenge Andrew left. I'm, I'm, and I said this to Andrew, I said, Andrew, I, I'm just an average Joe, you know, like I'm not trying to compete with you. I'm not trying to compete with anybody. I'm just trying to learn myself how to become a great trader. Now, if you're reaching out and you're willing to help, the community, and you want to show us why we should be shorting or longing at a certain time, our community would love to get you on the show. And, and uh, we'd love to have you on the show to be able to, you know, maybe educate why you do what you do. However, however, the reason why I was doing what I did was because I long stocks and I buy stocks and investors in, in my community and in your community are buying Kronos Group, CVSI, yep. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, so when you IGC, Tilray, Canopy Growth, when you are shorting these stocks and then you're putting litigation against them, you create a lot of negative energy towards these stocks and then it drives the prices down, which I understand is to your benefit and you're doing it legally. I understand that. Now... What that does for investors like us, it creates a buying opportunity. So from that perspective, I love that. However, if you're an investor that's a short-term day trader, you can get hurt. So a lot of investors were getting hurt. Yep. That's why we did the diss track. And that's why we've been talking about, you know, hey, you're not welcome in this country and stuff. Everything that we've done has been for education and entertainment purposes. Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. And always will be. So don't yeah. take it personal. It's just, we wanted to kind of put a stand out there and say, hey, listen, if someone's going to short these stocks and aggressively attack them, we need to go out there and do something to try to rise them up again. Because, you know, we need to still maintain a positive outlook in this industry because we're investors and we want them to go up so we can make money. Exactly. So it's not a personal thing, you know, like... If you're shorting them and taking them down, you're like what we call Dr. Evil because you're taking them <laughs> down. And we are, you know, trying to be like Superman and yeah. Batman and we're fighting back because we're trying to help them go up so we can all make money one day, right? But there's no guarantee of that in the market and I can't control the market and you exactly. can't control the market, but Andrew can actually control the market. Yeah. So the fact that you're in contact with me, Andrew, listen, you know, I respect you. If I don't respect you, I would not speak of you. And I told you this, okay? So, and Andrew told me, you know, go Tesla. So now he's buying stocks long too. So I understand he's buying stocks long, he shorts them. I don't really short stocks. So yeah. I only long stocks. So that's why, you know, we've talked about it. But, you know, I have nothing against anybody. 
Everything I'm doing here is for entertainment and education purposes. Do not buy any picks I talk about on my show. I am not a licensed advisor. I am not an expert. I am simply an average Joe learning the markets like everybody else. But I have been buying stocks for a long time. I have won. I have lost. You know, I'm trying to develop a strategy that is going to be a winning strategy. I believe one day we will. But, you know, it's still in the works. Totally. That's exciting. That's exciting news. I mean, it's pretty cool, I think. Well, it's good to know that people are watching, right? So totally. from that perspective, but at the same time, I don't want anybody to feel like – I don't want hurting people's feelings. I didn't know that he was that sensitive. I didn't think that he would be sensitive towards what I said, but he did say yeah. that I was trying to mock him. So, Andrew, yeah. I apologize if you felt like I was trying to mock you. And uh, totally. I'm not going to be we putting out any more diss tracks on anybody unless somebody puts out a diss track on me first. And then I will put out a diss yeah. track on them. No, yeah, I think, I mean, I think that'd be a really cool twist if we could manage to get him on the show. That'd be, that'd be very interesting. I mean, that, I agree with you what you said. He's definitely a powerful man. And uh, yeah, it's, it's cool that people are watching is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's cool that people is. are watching. Well, we know they're watching. Question is, are you winning? If you're buying in the red <laughs> and you're selling in the green, you should be winning. Exactly. So we're going to wrap this video up, Rich. Um, thanks so much for coming on my show. And uh, I look forward to many, many, many more collabs with you in the future. We're, now we've got a featured section on each one of our channels, Departures Cafe on Rich TV Live, Rich TV Live on Departures Capital. And I look forward to not only collabs, but business ventures in the future, particularly or specifically in the CBD section. CBDs, data, media. Yeah. Those three things. So look, we are experts look those, in those three look fields. Look at those three things, guys. Yo, this is my boy, Kenny Lee. Shout out to Kenny Lee. Shout out to Kenny Lee. Where's Kenny Lee from? Cali. I'm sorry, Cali. Vegas. Vegas? Vegas? All right, well, I'm gonna let you go, Rich. Have a good one. Peace.